of the many thousands of people touring the North Carolina Outer Banks each year, few people appreciate the raw beauty here as much as nature photographer Michael Halminski. Well, the Outer Banks, it's on the Atlantic Flyway. It's a major stopping point for migratory birds, all types of birds. We see hawks and songbirds, all the types of ducks and geese. From his fine art gallery on Hatteras Island, Michael's images communicate to visitors the visual splendor of the unique marine environment that is the Outer Banks. And if you were a bird up in the air flying and you're migrating north or south and you look down, you have all this water around and then here's this little patch of land, a little strip of sand with some vegetation on it. It's, uh, it's like a magnet for the, for the waterfowl. As seen from space, a satellite view glimpses the Outer Banks as they are a delicate necklace of land. A multi-billion dollar tourism industry has grown up along North Carolina's sandy jewel. People come to fish, to surf, to simply be here. And many come to live. The highly prized oceanfront properties occupy the front line whenever great storms roll in from the Atlantic. The area is vulnerable to an array of environmental stressors, including overdevelopment. But the overarching threat worsening all of these problems is global warming. One of the best records of climate change comes from Mike Mann's studies of tree rings at the University of Virginia. And he shows relatively stable climate since the last glacial period. This is the last 2,000 years of his record that shows relatively stable conditions of Earth's temperature. Uh, for a long uh, period of time. You can see uh, some annual variability, but it's not ever very large. And then a dramatic spike in the recent years uh, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution that can be linked to the human burning of fossil fuels and the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Those increasing CO2 levels find undisputed evidence in ice core samples. No other natural mechanism explaining the ominous temperature spike has attracted serious attention in the scientific community. But the idea of human-induced climate change, while over a century old, did encounter years of resistance in the court of public opinion. It's not surprising to me that it took uh, that long. This is a very difficult science to try to predict the climate of a planet, uh, both in the past and in the future. Uh, and I think what we've seen is a very healthy development of that science over the last 35 years leading to our consensus now. Consensus among scientists, a groundswell of public support. It appears global warming is on everyone's mind as the mass media, including cover stories from conservative magazines and interviews with conservative politicians on CNN have brought the global warming story into the mainstream. What will and what does global warming mean to the inhabitants of the Outer Banks, to all residents of North Carolina? I see several areas in which uh, citizens of North Carolina are feeling climate change and will feel it as the planet gets warmer in the next several decades. One of these, of course, is sea level rise. As polar ice currently sitting on land masses melts away into the sea, scientists predict that by the year 2100, ocean levels will have risen by as high as 43 inches. When only an inch rise can sink the lowest lying areas, the impact of global warming in North Carolina means a dramatically redrawn coastline. Bye-bye Outer Banks. True old timers like fisherman I.D. Midget are also concerned. They know time is short and the Outer Banks are vulnerable. Well, there is really nothing more than a reef which uh, separates uh, the ocean from the mainland and uh, protects the mainland, really, in a sense. And, uh, of course, any, if we get a rise in water level, we're, we're sunk. Uh, storms uh, will probably, where we're standing now, would be four or five foot deep, uh, probably armpit deep or more. Uh, hurricanes I'm talking about. While storms are a force of nature that have long attracted photographers like Michael Halminski, nobody would wish the kind of destruction he has witnessed on Hatteras Island as from Hurricane Isabel. 
While scientists don't agree on just how global warming will impact hurricane season on the Outer Banks, it's the destabilization of the weather and the prospect of far more intense hurricanes that has everyone concerned. A warmer North Carolina will undoubtedly be a drier North Carolina. I expect that greater rates of evaporation will leave drier soils. And of course, water is one of the things that most concerns uh, a farmer uh, in the success of, of the crop uh, in any particular year. While even the most robust computer models leave scientists uncertain over the exact degree of flooding and rising seas, the number of hurricanes, and a long list of direct and indirect impacts on people, animals, and the environment, what is clear is that if something isn't done to limit and lower global warming pollution, that the biggest losers in this dangerous experiment with Earth's atmosphere are humans and our treasured resources. So there are challenges with global warming, but there are also opportunities. And if businesses seize these opportunities, we will see innovation flow forward. That's why we're seeing businesses like General Electric, DuPont, and British Petroleum provide leadership. But we need other sectors to engage, like the agriculture sector, where they can actually grow fuels where we used to mine fossil fuels. And that will provide cleaner sources of energy that reduce global warming pollution. This innovation will not happen without government involvement. Voluntary measures don't work. Time and time again, we've seen where the government sets the rules of the road, industry responds with technology and innovation. The best example is the acid rain provisions of the Clean Air Act. We had success there. We can have success again using the same measures for global warming pollution. But we're gonna need government leadership, involvement and in innovation from industry, and the support of every citizen. More than anything else, it's probably just a way of life, but I do appreciate the early morning and the silence and the tranquility. It's just it's something that's ingrained in you, I guess. It's a love of the land, I suppose. If North Carolinians choose to fight against a future largely defined by global warming, a chief motivation will be out of self-interest. But we should consider a higher calling, and that is providing good stewardship of our treasured places for I.D. Midget and all North Carolinians alike, places like the lovely Outer Banks. <laughs>